we're joined now by IHS's Global Insights Energy Research Manager, Simon Wardell. Simon, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, we've seen today that, uh, that President Obama has uh, suspended some of the licenses to drill around the coast and in Alaska. Um, do you think that this is a sign of more to come? I mean, if we can't, if we don't know how to cap um, deep, deep water drilling, should we be doing it in the first place? Well, I mean, that's a very good question. And, and obviously, we have been doing deep water drilling for quite a while, mm. and this is the first major accident, but that doesn't really excuse the fact that we have, you know, serious consequences. And, I think and if we have been doing it for quite a while, should people not have been looking before this at the worst case scenario and what they would do about it? Well, I mean, history had told us that the worst case scenario was maybe five to 10,000, maybe 20,000 barrels in total leaking. Mm. Uh, we, you know, there were, there were, there were measures in place to try and stop this kind of blowout happening. There's a, a valve that should be working. But obviously, uh, the consequences are severe, and it's the unexpected, it's the unknown risks that mm. tend to be the ones that, that emerge to, to pose the real big problems. So I think what's going to happen is we are going to get quite, quite stringent regulation coming in now, certainly for the Gulf of Mexico and probably for a lot of other deep water areas as well, although that still sort of remains to be seen. There is a concern, though, presumably, isn't there, for a company, an international company like BP um, and, and other major global um, uh, companies, that if you say, well, OK, it's much more expensive to drill in the Gulf of Mexico than elsewhere, then they won't drill in the Gulf of well, Mexico. Of course, and um, are you, the US wants the oil, right? Yeah, this is the balance the, the government and the regulators have to take. Uh, how, how stringent do you make the regulations? How much additional cost do you add? The, the deep water industry, the offshore industry, employs a very large number of people in the United States. Mm -hmm. And even this moratorium is going to have some consequences. Long-term changes, as you say, making it less attractive to investors, mm -hmm. that could have serious consequences for jobs ultimately. So it's striking this balance. And of course, the U.S. also wants to develop its own oil resources to reduce its dependence on, on imports. So it, it is striking that balance, which is going to be very, very difficult over the longer term. And presumably it's very hard to get any kind of global regulation on this for example the relief well that's now been dug if everyone always dug a relief well then this presumably wouldn't happen but then that would be extremely expensive well exactly and of course there are other risks that we don't know I mean it, deep water drilling is 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 a tough business it's it's complex it's difficult it's very deep depths and there are risks that we can't we can't completely and utterly account for but yes it seems sensible after this that there will be tougher precautions but if we do extend this to dr drilling two wells yes uh, for every time you drill deep water that is going to raise expense quite a lot mm. we can see uh, at the moment live pictures uh, of what's going on uh, underwater there in the Gulf. Uh, do you get the impression now that there is a feeling of desperation about uh, BP's latest attempts? Well, they are getting increasingly more um, uh, creative in their efforts to try and cap this well. And yes, of course, they want to stop the oil flowing. Uh, as it flows more and more, the more damage, the more consequence you have for the company. And drilling a relief well is going to take time. That's always been the plan B, but plan A keeps changing quite significantly. And I think they will continue to think of, of more and more creative ways to try and stop it. But at the moment, it's not looking all that promising. Mm. Now, BP doesn't have a great track record in the U.S. Do you think that uh, Tony Hayward will lose his job? Job over this ultimately? Well, it's hard to say what BP do uh, ultimately in, in terms of their internal, uh, in mm. what, what decisions they make about the corporate structure. Mm. But there's no question that this, is, this has been a big disaster for BP and it, it certainly damaged the reputation. And, uh, and how is President Obama coming out of this? Uh, he's talking tough, isn't he? Well, he is, yes. I think initially there was maybe some concern that he hadn't, he hadn't moved quickly enough. And now there's some concern maybe he's moving too quickly. Mm. That suggests to me he might be striking the right balance yeah. um, if he's getting criticized from both sides. But Again, he's got to make that long-term decision about that balance and that trade-off between industry and, and, and the need to uh, make jobs and create jobs and, and that need to, uh, to ensure that there's no further disasters of, of this sort of nature and magnitude. Simon, thank you very much indeed.